SG Lang is a fast large language model serving framework, but I'm pretty sure they also use it in training, especially in XAI. So all of these companies are using it. You can uh, just create your own function and put sglang.function decorator above and then uh, get your system prompt, user prompt and use sglang.generate to generate the answer, the result. It's very simple. We got a bunch of different stuff, different attention mechanisms, speculative decoding, different quantizations, FP4, FP8, INT4, etc. So this front-end language layer in Python sglang lang is your interface that you can use. There is a bunch of different, different files here. And then backend, when you use the interface, this is what gets the work done. So entry points, engine pi, the main engine class that orchestrates the entire serving pipeline. So this is the path to the engine and we can see this class. So tokenizer manager tokenizes the requests and sends them to the scheduler. Scheduler sub process receives requests from the tokenizer manager schedules batches forwards them through the language model and sends the output of the language model back to the detokenizer so detokenizer manager is going to detokenize the output tokens and send the result back to the tokenizer manager for the next generation or it can also send text back to the user this architecture enables high performance parallel processing across multiple sub processes so that could be the scheduler uh, generating tokens and detokenizer as well. Efficient batching, smart scheduling of requests for optimal GPU utilization, memory management where separate processes prevent memory conflicts. Scalability, uh, SGLang can handle multiple concurrent requests efficiently. This is why they use it at XAI, for example. And I think in XAI, they are just trying to quickly like build up. So they're using all of the made, made tools already. They don't wanna invent, reinvent the wheel. That's why they are also importing entire uh, electricity power station, I think, from like across the seas. So we have uh, key features are Radix attention for efficient prefix caching. So you know when you send a message, when you are in a conversation, this upper part of the message is always repeated. Every time there is a new message, all of this thing gets sent again. So you can just cache that without needing to recompute this first part of the message all the time. That's what I think it is. Continuous batching, dynamic batch formation for optimal throughput. So these are like tricks for memory, GPU memory. Multimodal support, images, video, text inputs. Structured outputs, JSON schema validation, regex constraints. Distributed inference support for tensor, pipeline or expert parallelism. When you split the model across multiple GPUs, for example. All of these quantizations. So FP4 is just for inference, I believe, but maybe they will, they will soon be for training as well. So then we got this uh, stream executor, which is kind of maybe one of the main things. So it's asynchronous execution. It uses producer consumer pattern, variables unsynchronized using threading events. Each execution context maintains its own state. Intermediate representations IR system. The IR system in IRPy defines the abstract syntax tree for SGL programs. So we have constraint generation, the regex and JSON schema validation at the IR level. API speculative execution, pre-computation of API calls for performance. To use SGLang, you can create a new Python file and then import it like this. Then we wanna set this local host as the default backend that's gonna generate our uh, large language model text and stuff. Then we can define a generation function, which is sgl.function, single turn question that gets s, which is entire conversation as I'm understanding, and then the question, so we add the user question and then we generate the answer under this answer key. So in this S state, under the key answer, you have your answer. S represents the state of the generation process, which is built up incrementally. Dot run executes the sglang function and returns the final state that contains the generated output. Generating JSON output is almost the same. We just define this JSON schema. So 
like this and tell it in the prompt to generate JSON format. And then later, if we uh, take what's under the key JSON output that we defined here, the key, we can just load that into the JSON. We can also run processes in parallel. So if we have our function that takes in the question and we have array of questions, run the generations in parallel by providing a list of arguments. So we just call this function single turn question with run batch and then provide list of these questions. And we can print all of the answers because run batch will return, return a list of states. So for S in states, we print the answer. So to use this SGLang, you would need to pip install it. And then you need to have it running with some model, for example, Llama. And then uh, this will give you the port and you need to connect to that port, which what I was explaining with the base URL, so localhost and the, the port from your script to be able to generate, use this language model to generate this. Interactive chatbots require maintaining a history of conversations. SGLang handles this efficiently by building upon its state object. The key is to construct the full conversation history with the SGLang function for each new turn. So besides the state, you can also pass in history to create this multi-turn uh, chatbot. History is a diction list of dictionaries where each dictionary represents a turn with a role and content. It's a bit confusing, but here, turn in history, we got turn role to be user and turn content. So I guess history is just a single conversation. It's a uh, turn is a dictionary. So for user, you assign the content of the turn to sgl.user and for assistant you assign content of the turn to the sgl assistant so this is like a, just a history that you store in your memory this is how you create an interactive loop so you just keep appending the new user inputs and ai responses to this history and then just keep calling it with this history argument i'm not sure why it's passing in history here, but uh, not the state. But as I understand, because we are running dot run, this somehow manages to pass in state as well to this multi-turn chatbot. And if you just run this script, you're going to get the interactive chatbot script. Forking the parallel generation. So sometimes you want to generate multiple outputs from a single input, single prompt, single user message. Maybe you want to generate some options to choose from. So we have sgl.fork. So to our uh, multiple endings, to our generation function, we can have number of forks, number of generations for a single input. So here with sgl.fork and then pass in the number of forks as fork. So uh, this creates number of forks independent generation branches from the current state. But crucially, the computation for processing this input, the shared story premise, is done only once. And then you fork multiple generations. Inside the loop, we work on each forked state, F, independently, generating text and storing it in a uniquely named variable. For example, ending 0, ending 1. This is where we uh, define the variable sgl.gen and the name of the variable. Just like up here, above, we were using SGN, SGL gen with response key. So we will just now put a variable now. We can also pass this stream equals true when we call this run on our function. And it will get automatically taken care of. And this is how we catch the partial states and print it to the user. Here we see inner workings of SGLang for those who want to build their own systems or modify SGLang, etc. So our state object is not a simple string, it's a state builder that keeps track of the sequence of operations. And then with this uh, plus equals, when you add plus equals like SGL user hello message to the state, 
this is what happens. So it seems like SGLang defined a custom handling of this plus equals in its class. So it kind of just appends uh, this operation to the array of operations. By the way, you can define these like custom handlings uh, with these kind of classes. Each of these things has its own uh, function in, in a class and you can rewrite it and define custom handling. Okay, well, that's going to be it for this video. I think I'm going to end it. You can join our Discord server where we do AI research and uh, see you next time. Check out other videos on my channel and see you next time.